السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is our second session with Islamic Leaf Staff in Switzerland. In the first session, we discussed the history and some of the principles and the values and some incidents happened here and there to build the organizations. In this session, we are going to discuss one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven elements for community leadership. Eleven elements for community leadership. So as young people, we cannot afford just to become followers. We have to keep building our characters that one day will become leaders to be followed by others. Leaders to be followed by others. What are those criteria or elements that make me or you as a young man or a young woman as a leader? You are as a humanitarian worker. You are as a social worker. You are as a political worker or economist. One day you plan for yourself to become a leader. So you have to climb the ladder of leadership. You have to climb the ladder of leadership. Let me talk about the 11 elements. And if you want to add, you can add. Okay? Point number one is focusing. You don't keep doing things haphazardly. Today I'm doing A, tomorrow I'm doing B, after tomorrow I'm doing C. No. I focus on the deliverable. A farmer who is looking at his land, he has to look at the soil, the water, the seed, the vegetation, and the tree. does not just throw the seeds and leave. He keep focusing on the nurturing and nourishment of the seed till it becomes a fruitful tree. A seed becomes a fruitful tree. So one of the criteria is you focus. Don't be all over the place. Don't be all over the place. You focus. If you don't focus, your tree will never bear fruits or will bear few fruits, not huge amount of fruit. Focusing, number one. Number two is timekeeping. Time is life. Time is a life-saving element. Time is advancing an advancement time is developing time is productivity quite often young people say let us chill or relax okay fine a man with a mission sometime a, ma a man which a young 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 woman or young uh, young man sometimes don't have time to chill don't have time to relax. Sometimes you take this kind of break to re-energize yourself. But not a big break that actually will let you to, 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 to forget about your mission and the delivery of your message. Have to look at the time. Time is like a sword, as is Arab proverb. Al-waqt kwasayf, illam taqta'u qata'ak. Is like a sword. If you don't cut with it, it will cut you. So please, when you say I come 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock to deliver at 12 o'clock, you do that. Timekeeping is very important. When you say I deliver at 1 o'clock, I deliver at 1 o'clock. Monday, 25th of July, 
2 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, 25th of July, one the half, uh, in the after, uh, one, uh, one, uh, uh, half past one in the afternoon, I'll deliver. Be ahead of your time. Be in competition with the time itself. And here, you have to add an element of barakah. Element of what? Of barakah. How the barakah comes to you? Barakah is one of the soldiers of Allah. He grants, he grants it to whom he likes. Barakah does not give, is not given to anyone. It's given to the sincere individual like yourself who are dedicated to help people, who are committed to help people, who are sacrificing their time, their effort, their wealth to serve people. When Allah sees that, He gave you the barakah, which instead of you finishing the job in one day, you can finish it in a few hours. In one week, you can finish it in one day. In one month, you can finish it in one week. Because the element of barakah means that Allah is reshuffling your thoughts, your ideas, and your vision. I give you an example from my history. We talked about my first visit to Bangladesh in 1991. I failed my degree in 1990 to submit my thesis to the medical school. And I was given one year to rewrite it again. One year. Then by May, April, May, June, the cyclone came to hit Bangladesh. I had a phone call from a young man in Bradford said, we have raised 30,000 pounds. At that time, 1991, 30,000 pounds was a big amount of money for Islamic relief. 30,000 pounds, 1991. He said, we have raised this amount of money. Then British Airways giving us two first class tickets to go to Bangladesh. I said, okay, fine, I'll find someone to go with you because I was supposed to finish my thesis and submit it before November 1991. And this was about May, June. Very critical for me. For two, three weeks, I was going around to find young people like you and others to go instead of me. I failed to find anyone. I failed to find anyone. You know what happened? On this Friday, when I decided to go and leave my thesis, I was in my office. I made the phone call in the morning to my colleague in Bradford, who raised the 30,000 pounds, telling him, okay, let us fly, me and you on Monday, the following week. Halas? So I left my thesis and I reprioritized and put the priority for the people of Bangladesh instead of my thesis. Khalas? Here the barakah comes. What was that? The barakah comes in the evening of the same day. After Jum'a prayer, I went to my office in the physics department. And I have, give me your, your book. And I have all the data. I was very good of writing some figures like this. And I was looking at the numbers and the data. You know what happened? Baraka. What Baraka was, when I looked at the same data, Allah gave me the idea to reshuffle the data, which I have for six years, and produce a new theory, a new hypothesis. Balaka only came when Allah found that Asam or Elair or Ahmad gave the priority to the people, not to himself and their thesis. 
here the baraka comes. Here the theory came. It will not come to you unless you spend your effort for the other people. On Monday morning, I went to my supervisor in the medical school. I showed him what I wrote as a new thing. I said, this is good. It's a new theory. Please put it. Baraka only comes to your time when Allah looks at your heart and see that Alair or Asam or Ahmad or others are sincerely putting the priority of the poor people before the priority. He will never let you down. He will never ever let you down. Why? Because he said, are you going to be better than myself, my slave? Are you going to be more kind to my people, my slave? No, 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 no. You did this, I did that for you. You did this, I do that for you. This is the baraka. So baraka does not, is not given to anyone. It's only given to the one like you who sit down and said, let us do it. And forgot about his personal needs sometimes, his personal desire sometimes, or her personal desire and look at the needs of the community. This is where Baraka comes. So when you look at the second point, which is there, which is timekeeping, timekeeping with Baraka. We have to bring Baraka to our timekeeping. The third point is commitment. Are you committed? I ask you, what do you mean by commitment? Go on, what do you mean by commitment? Commitment means that you do more than you expect. Yes, what about you? It means that you are giving your 100% and you are you always like have the, the mission in mind. You are doing 100% of what you told people to do. What means by commitment? You do whatever it's needed to do. You do whatever it's needed to do. So commitment means that you have to be very honest. I am committed to do this so somebody else will do something else. I'm responsible. I'm an authority of that. So trust me, this commitment. I'm going to try this project proposal, this commitment. By when? By tomorrow. Or by next week, this commitment. I'm going to visit five or 10 refugees families. I'm going to make a case study. I'm committed to make this case study. This commitment, honesty, okay? This commitment. Our work is based on commitment, not on false promises. Not on, no matter how good you are and eloquent you are in the way to speak to others, commitment is a delivery of what you are committed to deliver. This is number three. Number four, to be frank. I have a question for you. Yes, what's the question? Um, how do you keep uh, a team, for example, Islamic community team? Uh, to be, because we are humans, so not everyone is committed as, like, you cannot find commitment in everyone 100%. How do you keep this, like, for the everyday operations of them to keep not just not motivation but commitment yeah in the long run yeah commitment means role modeling you are the manager how to keep the commitment going on you are the manager you are the director you are the ceo you are the father you are the teacher you are the headmaster you are the uh, owner of the company if everybody sees that you are committed, everybody would be committed like you. Every one of you is looking after others. The father in the house, the mother in the family, the teacher in the class, the engineer in the factory, 
the owner in the business and the company and kullukum ra'in wa kullukum and you are responsible for your followers if people see you that you come at 8 o'clock treating them very nice and deliver you can push them by good example sometimes you order them in a bad way they could be delivering but because they are scared to lose their job but they can be they can deliver more with a smile with kindness with caring with good manner i experienced this with one of the young girls she is older than her boss she is at nearly 8 30 age 39 has more experience than the boss the boss is at the age of 30 the boss is very powerful pushing and micromanaging you know what happened later on the more senior girl who was actually under the more junior in age said okay i can't work with you i'm leaving it's not by pushing me you make me uh, able to deliver it's by giving me a space and leave me to deliver so when you are a boss if they see that you are there before them and you are leaving after them and you are caring for them and you are delivering without pushing it could be advice it can be motivating everybody will produce more and more and more when i mentioned the names of those people and the first session who went to america at the end of 1993 in december and april 1994 there were three young people all of them were less uh, one of them was less than 25 the other two the other two are actually 25 and 30 they were giving the space we use what it call every day and every, every other day you know what when they were giving the space was very less salary the salary was at the edge of social benefit at that time we're giving them $1000 a month which is just the lowest salary they have been offered by other companies or other organizations salaries of 3000 4000 uh, dollar a month in america I said no i'm not going to leave you know why because they found that they run they themselves they run the organization they have a space for themselves to grow they have authority and responsibility not responsibility without authority don't ever give responsibility to somebody like you without giving him or her authority you want me to become responsible give me authority no responsibility without authority all right this is the commit frankness there we talk about frankness frankness and transparency are one coin with two sides you have to be very frank with people who made loss who made mistake let us sit down and admit that we made mistake one day we were trying to push women in the organization to wear hijab some of the young girls who are not wearing hijab were a little bit shy to speak you know who was standing against us because of this wrong sentence i did not write it somebody else did the girls who wore hijab they came in the pub and in, in, in the organization meeting said whoever read uh, 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 wrote this is wrong you don't force young girl to wear hijab leave her i was very happy to listen to the discussion coming from a woman who was wearing hijab to defend a woman who was not wearing hijab this is where you admit and we changed the dress code whether you wear hijab or not we need to take from you the best of you so if you do a mistake you admit it 
Transparency and frankness are, as I said, go back to back. Transparency is very, very important. You know why? Because the money that you have is public money. You don't own it. The organization does not own it. The public own the money. The people own the money. The poor people own the money. The refugees own the money. The internet space people own the money. The orphans own the money. The woods own the money. The sick, all those people own this money. Don't ever overspend the money. Waste the money and this transparency. You are, you have to be transparent in the way that you think for the people, you deliver for them, and you protect them. I can or I can't. One day, we took one million dollars from the Ministry of Kaf in Qatar to build the school in Albania. For one year, we failed to buy the land because they cannot register the land on your name as organization. After one year, we came back to the minister. I took the check with me and traveled to Doha with the check, giving it back to the minister. He said, what is this? He said, this is your money. He said, why? He said, we failed as organization to buy the land. So we failed to do the, the school, to build the school. Take it back. You know what he said? You are the only organization who refund the money to us. Others could have been bought with anybody's name and the minister will not go there. But we went in a transparent way to tell them, you make history. Because nobody will admit that he or she failed to deliver. Take your money back. But this is public money. Cooperation, you cannot do it alone. Inside the department, everybody inside the department have to cooperate together. From the manager to the, senior, the junior and senior officers. Everybody inside the organization has to, organization to, to cooperate together. This department, with this department, with this department. Not to be living in isolated, well, isolated what? Islands. Oh, this is my village. Don't touch it. This is my department. This is my division. Don't touch it. No, no, no. You have to cooperate with your, the other department, inside the department, and with the other organization as well. Cooperation now is a compelling necessity. Cooperation is a compelling necessity. The huge amount of problems affecting people globally forcing us to cooperate together. You go to the other organization, see what they have. So sit down together, see who can work in this village on water, sanitation, health, education, and others. If they are very good in education, okay, fine, give them the money for education. And they are very good in health, they give you the money for health. This kind of cooperation, build the community, save resources, and create leadership. Clear? Cooperation is very important. To save money, to save time, to save effort, and build the community. Participate or build partnership. What is the difference between participation and building partnership? Yes, any, anyone can participate and build a partnership. Um, in my case, in my opinion, it would be exploring the collaborative opportunities for others. And to always keep in mind that this cooperation is with the ultimate goal of, for the benefit of those who are in need. 
you don't create this partnership because you think it's nice, but because it's necessary for those who need it. Yes. How about you? Yeah. Participate and partnership. I think it depends at which levels. It yeah. Be, uh, institutional, which level? Yeah. yeah. Institutional or business um, and participate. We can participate in events, in, I don't know, cooperate with other NGOs to, yeah. to uh, achieve something. Yeah. Uh, but the goal is to always, like, I think it's related also on what you said before, the cooperation. Yeah. Uh, it's always in, in that, uh, yeah, that way, I think. But yeah, it depends. I think it depends also on the levels. Yeah, okay. Participate and partnership. It's like a family. Huh? If you're, it's like a family. If you are part of the family, you participate in the activities of the family. I see. If you are in the family, you participate in the activity of the family. Okay. Participate is engaging or engagement. Okay? Which will lead to partnership. Because sometimes you need to communicate first. Okay? Before you participate, who are you? Then they invite you for an event, you go to participate, then you build partnership. So communicate, participate, and build partnership. It goes a step after another. So try to seek, to grasp the opportunity to connect, communicate, participate, and build partnership. You said connect. Communicate. Communicate, participate. Connect, communicate, participate, and building partnership. It goes one, two, three, four. Because as I believe in, connection is protection. Connection is protection. It depends who's, who you connect with. As I mentioned to you earlier, September 11th came where we have been connecting with international organization 10 years for September 11th. That's why when September 11th came, a lot of people knew us, so they were defending us. If we could not have been connecting before September 11th, it could have been done by the American or the others. But in the Private discussion of this organization, they said, yes, we know the organization. If they said, no, don't know the organization, they will ask us. So, so network that's the networking, connection, participation, and building partnership. Inclusivity. Not uh, the other word is monopoly. When you take everything over, what do you call it? Uh, Inclusivity is different to mon monopoly. Monopoly is you are in control. You don't want to include everybody. Okay? You don't want to include anybody. Okay? You are in control of everybody, which is no good. Inclusive means you are bringing many people to your table. Whether inside the organization, as different culture, different faith, different sex, or with other organizations. Inclusivity has internal dimension and external dimension. Internal dimension, when you employ young people, women, elderly people, different faith, different culture, different philosophy of thinking, different background, different languages, this internal. Externally, inclusivity, you have an initiative and you want to include somebody else with you. 
So you ask them to come before you announce it. Like I have a statement now about the earthquake in, uh, in Syria and Turkey. I worked very hard as an organization to produce this statement. Before announcing it, you want it to have more powerful impact. So you ask people to sign up. Ask people to read it first. Ask people to edit it before announcing it. So from your resources, you put this piece of paper on your table. But tell them I'm not going to announce it unless each and every one of you have a say in it. Edit, change, and, and spread the message. This is inclusivity, external. When you have this, instead of one organization signing up, signing up for it, it be 20 or 30 organizations. Inclusivity is not about who is first and who is the first. You could be the first to think about it because others are very busy. But don't show others that you are the first. Tell them I'm going to wait for every and each one of you to read and to have the right to edit what I wrote. This is what we have done when we organized the workshops for Syria and Turkey a few months ago. And instead of being signed by one or two or three, it was signed by 60 or 70 organizations. And they have the power, the power to edit the statement. So wait till people join you. This is inclusivity. Empowerment. From day one, brothers, you have at the back of your mind to, that you will create an empowered local community. Empowered local organization. Empowered local leadership. How? First of all, to take them by the hand. Show them the way. Positive partnership. Then, practically, letting them to lead and to be shadowed by you. Then, to be left alone. To give them all the tools of communication and connection with the outside world. So you have to say, each one of us have to decide what do you mean by empowerment. Have to have a definition of empowerment. Empowerment means that this local community will be able in five years' time to stand on its feet, to defend its community, to raise funds for the community, to develop the community, to protect the community, and to find the solution for the problem in the community. So to measure the impact of your work on the community after empowering it. So you have two, from the very beginning, put at the back of the mind of every officer of your organization that in five years' time, we are going to empower the people of this community to be independent. Not to be sleeping and relying heavily on our funding. Don't convert them into contractors or subcontractors. Make them to be a community worker community activists, community leaders, giving them the confidence to do, to work, and to fail. Then you guide them. This empowerment. Perseverance. Yes. I have a question for empowerment. Uh, as you said earlier, uh, a lot of people have this bad image of humanitarian organizations because sometimes they are empowering them in a way that they feel like they are a tool instead of real people. So how do you how do you cut the image of those organizations that build this bad image? 
Some organization has bad image. Why? Why do they have bad image? As you said earlier, for example, they promise something. And ah, they do not fulfill the promises. And how you, you bring someone that has a bad image to say, okay, we as Islamic relief, we will deliver. How do you like... You, you lead by example. To make a difference between you and the others. Maybe my organization failed to deliver. Fine. I gave you the example. A lot of organizations nowadays say 0% administration. Don't follow them. Nothing on earth called 0% administration. Be frank and be honest and tell them I will take 5, 10 or 15 or 20% because I cannot function without organization. And those people who tell you 0% admin, uh, uh, admin, go and check. You find that they are spending money on the administration. Okay? So those people who give bad image for the sake of raising funds are not honest. All the time be honest. All the time be honest. And there's nothing called in any work zero administration. Perseverance is more difficult than patience. I'll give you an example. I used to visit one of the organizations in the Gulf for five years. To do what? Drinking coffee and tea. <laughs> and after five years, they started to look at us. Five years drinking coffee and tea. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Nothing. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? If, if we were not patient, we could not have taken the first half a million, the second half a million, and the third million. But it took us five years of visit. Being kind to people, people were to ask about you. One day, someone, I found him coming to the office from Saudi Arabia. He didn't, tell, didn't say where he come, which organization. And they started to ask me, I was in my room, a lot of difficult questions. You know why he came? Because he received a lot of information, brochures. He said, this organization might be lying. Nice building. When he came and saw the building, when he came and saw the offices, when he came and saw the employees, when he came and interviewed me, he said, you are honest. We came to check on you. This was one of the largest businessmen in Saudi Arabia at that time. Sent one of his people to check on us. Because you keep sending leaflet. Many people send leaflets. So what? But this man decided to jump on a plane without telling us that he is coming from which organization. And he was, to be very honest, <laughs> was doing it in a very uh, funny way. I had a big table like this one. And they sat on the table. And they was questioning me. Ah! I said, who are you? Ah! Who are you? Then I discovered, later on said, your organization is, is honest organization. What you sent to us was true and they're going to support you. So five years of visits just to drink coffee and tea. After that, after that, we took the millions from the same organization. This is vision. Vision could be two kinds of vision. Your vision as an organization and the vision of other organizations. No job will be successful without a vision. Where are we going to go? Okay. What we want to do, we want to increase the level of literacy 20% or 10% or 30% in this village. This is the vision. 
We need to have local market to make the families able to produce things. So the woman will work, her children will work with her, and the husband will work. So it will be like this kind of community empowerment. We want to cover the deficit of water supply to the village. We want to build a lot of clinics to talk about the first aid or talk about uh, public health or maternity. Uh, what do you call it? Maternity care or child care. So with the vision, yes, this clinic will be doing A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. One day we went to South Sudan with one project, drilling machine for water. After four years, when we visited the place, the mayor of the city or the area said, you people have sorted out 30% of the need of our community from water supply. So this is what you talk about vision. Water, 10%, water, 30%, water, 40%, education and others. Sometimes you need to both bring your vision to marry other vision. You as two or three organization have a coalition, consortium, to work together. And when we go to this village, you work on education, you work on sanitation, you work on health, you work on economic empowerment, you work on culture, you work on local market. So seven of us or six of us will be able to have the collective vision or complementary vision to build the community. Nobody should claim that he or she as organization can do it alone. This time is gone. In a village, you cannot do it alone. Because he is specialized in water, health, sanitation, economic empowerment, and others, and education. Yes? Uh, I have a question about the vision. Yeah. So, vision. Question about the vision. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, we see that we have a global vision and a lot of, like, we are a lion or... Yeah. Any vision. Any global vision. Any global vision has to be bottom up. Bottom up. It has to start from the local field offices. What you need to do is to put the criteria for each department and for each division and for each country. And you say, each one of you should contribute to own the vision. To what? To own the vision. From the field offices to the developing offices, or I mean to developed offices like the, the, the office in the West, fundraising offices, to the headquarter. And you marry the three or four vision according to one criteria. And let every individual to feel that he or she in this area own your vision. If they don't include them, they don't own it, it will be a piece of paper put in on the shelf or given to people just for PR. And none of the people will be implementing it. The vision and the strategy. Sometimes you spend tens of thousands of dollars to create strategy. Nobody can do it. It has vision and strategy has to go bottom up. Because I am the best one to strategize the local work. He is the best one to strategize the international work. He is the best one or she is the best one to strategize the global work of the whole organization and connect them together. You can't go without having all the strategists 
and different parts of the organization to work on it from the very beginning. A strategy, vision is a bottom-up process and should be owned by every department, every division, and every office of the organization. Don't ever say or never say that because they are in Africa, they are not developed enough. All right. You don't know what's happening in Sudan while you are sitting in London. Without me, you are a dead meat. Same for Afghanistan, same for Mali. So we should be complementing one another to make the global vision or to make the global strategy. Quite often, we pay money for consultancy to do the strategy. And they have people in the organization who knows, who know it far more better than the consultant. You can use the consultant to facilitate, but not to build the strategy. Your people will be the best of building the strategy, but get somebody to, to facilitate putting the jigsaw of the strategy together. This for the strategy and for the vision. I, do you want to add something else to the criteria when you come a leadership? This should be a new. Do you want to add something else before you eat your sandwiches? <laughs> yes, uh, Hamada. Thinking or eating. <laughs> we said focusing, timekeeping, commitment, frankness, transparency, cooperation, participation, inclusivity, empowerment, perseverance, complementarity of vision. I would maybe add something. Yes, what do you want to add? Uh, strategy. Strategy. And uh, the coordination between, as you said, the field and the earth management. Yes. I, as you said, if you don't, if you're not connected, you might do really big mistakes. That's right. Yeah. So I would maybe add this part of strategy that would make uh, the strategy very good. Any other points? Uh, in addition to frankness and transparency, I would also add the element of selflessness. Selflessness, of yes. course. <laughs> Maybe sometimes against you, but you know that you have selflessness is one of the cornerstone of any success. Sorry, I'm not mentioning it. This is my short sightedness. Whoever lowering himself for the greatness of Allah, Allah will raise him or raise her up. That's right. Selflessness is strategy to be added. Our work cannot be achieved without humility, without being humble, without altruism. No way. No way. You have to lower yourself for the people whom you think that they are socially lower than yourself. They are not socially lower than you because you are using their money on you. They are having the upper hand on you because they are spending their money on you. So you have to show humility and being humble and show this selflessness in action. Clear? All right, anything else? Before we go for the break, for the, because I can smell the kebab. Kebab is it or? or no, no, not, please, no, no, not, uh, what do you call it? No, no pizza. <laughs> yes? A lot, uh, but we have, uh, we have this afternoon and tomorrow. Okay, خلاص. Anything, Brother No. Yes? Yes. Now we break, finish the second session, and we'll meet after an hour, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah.